So today, Docker is all the rage. And in this segment, we're going to briefly look at the pattern known as service per container. So the big idea with this approach is that you take the code for your service and you package it up as a container. And then when you deploy your service instances, each one of them, is, each service instance, is a running container. And you could very well have multiple containers running on the same virtual machine, or in some cases, the same physical machine. So that, that's the approach in a nutshell. And what does that mean in practice? Well, con today, Docker is synonymous with the notion of containers. And this, by the way, is the Benjamin Franklin, which is a, a, one of the largest container ships in the world. It's about 1,300 feet long, and it actually has about 18,000 containers on it. It's huge, and it visited the port of Oakland for a few days right at the end of um, 2015. But yes, so Docker is all about containers. So in itself, Docker might be, in a, might be in, insufficient, and you end up having to use some kind of clustering technology on top of that. So for instance, you might use Kubernetes, which is a Docker clustering solution from Google. And there's also Marathon, and which is a layer on top of Mesos, which lets you manage your containers. And then there's also a product called DCHQ that gives you a nice UI for deploying your Docker containers on, on some virtual machines. In all these cases, the big idea is to have a pool of uh, machines, typically virtual machines, that the clustering solution just treats as basically one large pool of resources, and it's responsible for taking your containers and positioning them on, on the machines, and then managing them and keeping them up and running, and so on. So the idea is package everything up as Docker containers, and then run them on a cluster of machines. So there's a bunch of benefits to this approach. It actually shares many of the benefits of using virtual machines. You get very good isolation. Right? The, the actual technology is different. Containers are an OS level virtualization mechanism, which actually translates into each container is a set of sandbox threads that are isolated from one another. Um, but you can, it almost behaves like a lightweight virtual machine. So you get very, very good isolation. You get good manageability. It also means that the container encapsulates your implementation technology. So regardless of whatever technology you've used to implement your service, you package it up as a container and give it to someone to deploy, the interface is, is the same. It's just start the container, stop the container. So that makes deployment a very reliable process. But unlike virtual machines, containers are super lightweight. They're, they're basically, as I mentioned, just sandbox threads. So you don't actually have the whole overhead of a OS per service. All of the services that are running on the same machine are sharing the same underlying operating system you get very, very good resource utilization. You also have very, very fast deployment because they're very lightweight. So for instance, in the environment that I, I work in, building a Docker image takes five seconds, uploading it to a registry takes 30 seconds, pulling it down into the production environment takes another, say, 30 seconds, and then because there's no OS boot up required, um, so when a container starts, my Java process is what actually starts. It's got, it, well, my application ends up starting very, very quickly. So if you add up those numbers, it's approximately a minute from when my Jenkins build finishes to when my container could be, could be starting to initialize in a production environment which is very, very fast, very exciting. So there are some great benefits to using containers. 
but at the same time, there are some drawbacks. So the whole container ecosystem is relatively new, so the technology is not quite as mature as the virtual machine space. So it's, it's evolving rapidly, it's, it's maturing rapidly, but in some ways it's not quite as convenient as, as say, using something like EC2. And then for a whole bunch of deep technical reasons, containers aren't exactly as secure as virtual machines. Hypervisors give very, very good isolation between VMs, and containers are pretty good, but they're not exactly the same. So in summary, you know, containers have many of the benefits of virtual machines, except that they're a lot more efficient and they're a lot lighter weight. But then there are a few downsides as well.